Over the last 10 years, myself and a couple of others have actually spent our time going on the archives trying to find new material. Between us all, we have actually brought over 500 new accounts of the Battle of Waterloo into the general domain. Now, when I tell you that the history of it for the last 190 years has been written on about 250 versions, we now have 750, you can imagine the amount of change that has brought to our understanding of the battle. Napoleon, he escapes from Elba. Now, we all think this is actually quite a miraculous uh, escape, really, if you think about it, because not only is the HMS Partridge has rushed off into um, Livorno with uh, General Campbell, who says he was going over <coughs> his health. In fact, he was probably actually going there to meet his mistress, but he couldn't tell the king that when Napoleon left while he was away. Um, but also, there were three French frigates actually patrolling off Elba. So they stayed. But as soon as Partridge went, Napoleon went to, to France. Now, you've got to think, well, these three ships going back and forth across a narrow channel there, his chances of getting past it without being seen were virtually nil. So you have to start asking questions as to why he then still went for it. And the answer, I think, comes out from a number of reports. Um, one of the things that happens is that as soon as he comes out of the harbour, uh, he actually, his ships spot the partridge starting to return from Livorno. No, no Livorno, uh, sorry, part, the partridge <coughs> captain actually mistakes Napoleon's ship because it looks directly the same as one of the French frigates. So in fact, it looks very similar and he mistakenly thinks, so he doesn't go to approach it. But Napoleon's orders were immediately to take his ship alongside the French patrol ships because they would protect them. And another a stage further on, when he passes the second, first and second ships, the third ship also approaches him so close that the captain shouts across to the other ship and has a conversation. Now, any seafaring officer, and I was one many, for many years, would know a heavily laden cargo ship. He actually sees these ships leave at Elba, they're heavily laden. Apparently, even some of the soldiers were lying down the deck trying to hide from him. Now, I think the chances are he probably saw something. He admits later, he, th he admitted later, I thought Napoleon was on there, but he was on his way to Italy, so I left him go. Now, I don't know where he gets his idea of what his job was at that time, but seriously, that wasn't the answer. But at the end of the day, I think it's very clear that Napoleon on that day did not really take much of a chance. He knew that the three French captains were already on his side, and he knew he had safe passage, passage as long as he got away from Campbell and the actual uh, partridge while he was at Livorno. And that's why he sailed then.